welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL week four preview between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Bengals. I was impressed with the offensive line and how well they played last week versus the Green Bay Packers and the offensive pace was where it needs to be in order for the Bengals to be successful. Now this week versus Cleveland, spreading the wealth on offense, eases up that defensive pressure that the Browns will love to bring just enough so that way you can continue to hit those big plays at the intermediate level as well as deep down the field. Defensively, I would tilt coverage toward Josh Gordon, maybe even bracket him in certain down and distance type situations. And also I would go back to more of an attack mode instead of the read and react approach that you had to play last week versus Green Bay. I understand that's Aaron Rodgers and you have to be able to play contain versus him, but this is Brian Hoyer. You can get back to being aggressive defensively. Now let's move over to the Browns in this ball game. And Brian Hoyer held his own versus the Vikings, but he has to protect the football better. You cannot get careless with the football versus a very good team like Cincinnati. And flexing and flanking your tight end gives you a lot of versatility on offense. I love the way the Browns utilize their tight end in motion. They spread the field. They influence those linebackers, keeping that tight end on the move. That could also aid them in a running game. Defensively, the Browns have to find a way to get off the field this week versus Cincinnati. Those long sustained drives kill momentum that is built up on the earlier downs. The Browns do a great job on first and second down. It's third down. That's their Achilles heel. They have to do a better job. And versus Andy Dalton, I will go with a lot of robber this week. Influence him to throw into trap defenses, bracketed coverage, i.e. zone blitzes, because he still makes those rookie mistakes in year three, so you can get some opportunities to come away with a turnover. This week versus their in-state rival, the Cleveland Browns, the Cincinnati Bengals can get big plays out of the passing game by utilizing the double screen. One, it can isolate Gio Bernard on a linebacker, and it can also isolate A.J. Green on a safety. So here's how they can run a double screen. And it's up to Andy Dalton to make the right read at the snap of the ball, uh, pre-snap, as well as during the play. So you're going to have the screen to both sides. And this is a great play to run versus an aggressive defense because whatever side they think the screen is going to, Andy Dalton can go opposite. And that's what you want to create. The only guy that's blocking one guy man on man is the center. His job is to get that nose tackle block. If he can't block this, then none of this will work. So he has to get the nose block. And what we're going to do here, we're going to have the tight end, you have both tight ends flex on the inside. You also have Sanu and AJ Green with Gio Bernard in the backfield. So now what you're gonna have, you're gonna have the tight end go and try to kick out that cornerback. You're gonna try to influence this linebacker to come in so he can get blocked by the tackle. You're also gonna try to influence this tackle to come up, this uh, five technique to come up field so he can get blocked by the guard. And AJ Green has come here. Now if, if Andy Dalton reads, this is where they have the advantage numbers wise or positional wise, go to AJ Green. Now on the other side, we have, again, once again, tight end going and get the corner. Sanu's going up to try to get that strong safety and we're gonna try to influence backer to come up, get blocked by the tackle. Five technique come up field, get blocked by the guard. So that way Gio Bernard can run out on the quick screen. So now you see what we've created. We've created an opportunity for Gio Bernard to get the ball in space and for AJ Green to have that alley right there and it's all on Andy Dalton to read the coverage beforehand and also during the play but it's a unique way to get both guys in space creating that illusion that you're going to the screen to the left or you're going to the screen to the right and then later on you can easily sneak this guy over the middle for the middle screen so that's how you develop plays in sequence now you have both screens to the side and later on in the game a tight end screen over the middle so again the Bengals have options versus the Browns it's up to Andy Dalton to make the right decision this week versus the Cincinnati Bengals, I think the Browns can have some success in the red zone by utilizing blitz beaters and getting creative with their personnel. I'm going to show you how they can get that done. They've done this last, they did this last week versus the Minnesota Vikings and it was effective. You have Jordan Cameron here. You put Greg Little outside here because you want Josh Gordon on the inside. Big body does a great job getting in and out of his breaks and you want Devon Best, Mr. Third Down, on the outside. He's going to be your blitz beaters. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna have the inside guys running post corners. 10, 12, break to the corner. Inside guy, 10, 12, break to the corner. Pulling those safeties out, and remember, if this is a blitz and it's versus man, you need those quick 
hot routes. That's why you have the hitch to Greg Little, give him the shortest pass to catch so he can utilize his break tackle ability to get up the field. You have the running back flaring out so you can dump the football off there if the blitz is coming. And this is, like I said before, your blitz beater, the crosser. Devon Best is one of the best third down receivers in the game. Your blitz beater, if you got time in the pocket, you can hit those post corners routes because nine times out of ten, it's going to be versus man covers versus safeties. You can get big plays deep down the field or a touchdown, and you have your built-in hot reads and quick passes with the back, the crosser, and the hitch. So that's a way, a very quick way, the Browns can beat the blitz of the Cincinnati Bengals in the red zone, which could result into touchdowns or big plays for that offense. The X Factor this week for the Cincinnati Bengals will be their linebackers. They had an okay game last week versus Green Bay. They're going to have to play with better intensity versus the Browns, who will try to challenge them in the passing game. The X Factor in this game for the Browns will be defensive coordinator Ray Horton and a chess match that will take place between he and Jay Gruden on the opposite side. We know the Bengals love to come in with multiple personnel, so it's going to be interesting to see how well Horton is able to get his defense in proper position to make plays. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For Cincinnati, you can't get lazy in your coverage. That's how big plays downfield happen. It happened last week. It can happen again versus the Browns. Winning up front offensively, I was very impressed, like I said before, with how the Bengals played along that offensive line. They have to have an encore performance. And on defense, you want to play the run on the way to the quarterback. I am still not sold on the Browns' ability to run the football or stick with the run. So get aggressive in your pressure packages and just play the run on the way to the quarterback. And for the Browns in this ball game, Brian Hoyer has to continue to see the field just like he saw it last week versus Minnesota. He was able to get through his progressions well and also deliver the football with some accuracy. And you also want to keep an eye on the Bengals personnel. In my opinion, the Saints and the Bengals are similar in the fact that they can get predictable by personnel grouping. So you want to pay attention and adjust accordingly. And you have to get off the field on third down. We talked about this before. The Browns are a great First down, second down defense, third down they struggle, which is weird because the Browns do have the talent to get pressure on the quarterback to get off the field. And if they're going to be successful this week versus Cincinnati, then getting early three and outs in the ball game will be key. I like the Bengals in this ball game. Look at last week's matchup versus Green Bay. They were actually in position to blow out the Packers, but allowed them back in the game because they got sloppy with the football. That can't happen versus a team in Cleveland that knows them very well. Great matchup right here. The Browns, I believe, do match up well on the flanks with the Bengals, and I think that's where the Bengals are going to have to go on the inside. So I look for guys like Muhammad Tanu to have some success, or Tyler Eifert, or Jermaine Gresham to have some success on the interior, and that's why I'm picking the Bengals to knock off the Browns on the road. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Bengal fan forums and Brown fan forums for always showing football game plan support.